It is indeed an honor to stand here this evening and have the opportunity to introduce our Wells County Outstanding Citizen. <clears throat> Jeff Espick is known to everyone in this room. His service to this community has spanned 40 years or four decades in his service in the Indiana General Assembly on our behalf. <clears throat> I'm not gonna spend any time rehashing all of Jeff's accomplishments the past 40 years. I do wanna say that probably no one comes close to Jeff when it comes to understanding state finances. And he has received numerous recognitions for that expertise. Jeff thought he was out of the job until last November when Governor-elect Mike Pence asked Jeff to consider taking a role as Senior Advisor for Legislative Affairs for the new administration. And Jeff agreed to that with which Sharon sighed relief. <laughs> there are some things I want to tell you about Jeff that you may or may not know. Most of you know that Jeff was a self-employed <clears throat> business owner that operated both Cozy Court and Mobile Manor here in Bluffton and Ossian. <clears throat> Jeff, has, Jeff has a real talent for being a hands-on entrepreneur. He is pretty good with electrical things, and a testament to that is the fact that all the Christmas decorations that you have seen over the years around just property, Jeff made those himself, along with all of the uh, attractions that are animated. Jeff also designed and made those. So Jeff's got a little bit of an artistic flair that probably most of you are not aware. One of the things I also want to mention is the fact that Jeff is a longtime Colts fan and has been a season ticket holder for a long time. Now, I will also tell you that he is a closet NFL coach. <laughs> Anybody who sits around Jeff during game time can find out why the Colts aren't moving the ball or why the defense is so lousy against the run. Jeff could tell you that. All you have to do is sit next to him during the game. Jeff also served on the board of directors of the old First National Bank back years ago. And I believe it was in 1998 he joined the uh, board of directors of the Marco Bank and served until recently when they uh, joined forces with the Grable Bank to become IAB. Jeff's service to this community doesn't end with his involvement with the General Assembly. Jeff has been a member of the uh, Wells County Chamber, the Ossian Development Corporation. Uh, Jeff's been a longtime member of the Uniondale Volunteer Fire Department, as well as the Uniondale United Methodist Church. I do want to share one story with you that has never appeared in any of the media outlets <clears throat> as I close my introduction to Jeff. And I want to frame this story by telling you that last fall, Jeff had a number of ash trees that he had needed to have taken down because of the emerald ash borer. And so he called the tree service in to uh, remove the trees. And then Jeff, uh, being the uh, type person he is, rented a stump grinder and ground all the stumps up himself. So that's another talent Jeff has. He's a good stump grinder. <laughs> well, anyway, after Jeff gets the stumps ground up, he contacts the local nursery and has several trees planted where the ash trees had uh, been. And without uh, going into too much detail, one of the things that Jeff did was he always made sure the trees were OK. So each day he would go out and inspect the trees and make sure there were no damage done by deer eating the bark or uh, if they need to be watered, you know, he took care of watering them and, uh, you know, really took care of these new trees. Well, this one morning, uh, Jeff has a meeting in Indianapolis 
he gets up real early in the morning and goes out at the crack of dawn to check his trees. Now, just east of his house is a small woods. And Jeff is in the woods going about checking his trees. And lo and behold, he runs into a leprechaun. A leprechaun in a small woods in Uniondale, Indiana. And this leprechaun is livid because he has been discovered. And so after a few words, he makes a deal with Jeff. He says, Jeff, if you don't let anybody know that I'm out here, I will grant you any wish that you would like to have. And Jeff thinks a minute, he says, I'd like to live forever. And the leprechaun just hung his head, shook it and said, you know, of all the wishes you could ask for, that's the one I cannot grant. I'm sorry, but I, I just can't grant that wish. What is your second choice? Jeff thinks a minute. And he says, I'll tell you what. He said, I'd like to live long enough to see the members of the United States Congress act as adults and do what is best for the country. <laughs> and with that, the leprechaun said, you're a crafty one, aren't you? <laughs> Jeff, please go. John, I was going to say, if you needed more time, go ahead. I mean, I know, you know, the, it takes a long time to tell my life story. Thanks a lot, John Wicker. You know, we have, do have a grandson, John and, and my wife, John and his wife, Jo Lynn, and my wife, Sharon, and I are co-grandparents, and I don't know if you ever heard that term because I, con I coined it, I think. But we do have a co-eight-year-old uh, granddaughter here who says she asked her mother today, was it really right for one grandpa to give another grandpa an award? Keep it in the house when you can. Thanks, John. John and JoLynn Wicker are great people. I uh, appreciate your comments, John, except for the leprechaun business and ways. <laughs> I want to thank the chamber. I, I really mean that. What a great evening, folks. And I'm not going to belabor it too much longer, so my grandkids, our grandkids, can go home. Uh, but what a great job to Suzanne and, and uh, all of you, Brent, for the job that you've done tonight this past year. Rick, it's good to see you in a suit. I thought it was a funny story. It was in a bag, you thought, but you couldn't find the bag since you haven't gotten it out since summer. But Suzanne and the company, great job. I really believe that the chamber uh, is an important factor in our Wells County life, and I mean that sincerely. But I believe that all of us owe to the things that are important to us, whether it's our church, a social organization of one kind or another, the Chamber of Commerce. We owe part of ourselves to those things that are important to our life, and the chamber uh, truly is important uh, in the in the interest of uh, what's good for Wells County. So as I accept this award, I truly do it not just for myself, but thankfully, frankly, for the people who have allowed me to serve them over these last 40 years, because I couldn't have done it, I couldn't have been elected if the people didn't give me the opportunity to serve them, so I appreciate it very much. I do want to take just a moment to introduce my family, because we do have three grandkids here who would much rather be almost anywhere else than here. <laughs> and uh, we have two daughters. Uh, Carrie, who's married to Seth Wicker. Carrie's down here front. Seth Wicker, just a little further back there. Uh, obviously, John and Joe Lynn's son. There are three kids, uh, J.J., Wilson, and Keller. Uh, three great little kids, good kids, uh, we think. Thank you, kids. Our, our other daughter, uh, Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly, more recently married. She had to wait 10 years after Carrie was married so we could save up enough money for the next wedding. <laughs> So she just got married a couple of years ago, has a new grandson, and uh, she and her husband uh, live in, uh, uh, Chad Helm live in, in Indianapolis, and so it's good to have you here tonight, Kim, thank you for being here. My wife Sharon, who I can't forget, Sharon, you know, they used to say that behind every great man, I don't mean that, take that 
correctly. I don't, but I never great man is a good woman or a strong woman or something like that. And uh, Sharon is not behind me. She's, in, she's beside me, and she's been there all along. And in every way, she's been a partner. She gives me my best advice, and if I don't take it, I'm in trouble. So she's a, <laughs> she does a good job. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah. And, and I even have a good mother-in-law, believe that or not. Not everybody can say that. My mother-in-law, Betty Carey, down here. Betty's very much a part of our family and our life, and it's really past her bedtime, but she's here tonight for this ceremony. Anyway, thank you, Mom Carey, for being here with us. Let me just talk a moment about the two other awardees, if you will. Pete Olson, I didn't know you, Pete. I'm more impressed now than I might have been before. Congratulations on your award. I can tell you being a teacher is a tough job today. There's no doubt about it. And there's a couple reasons that come to my mind, first of all. Uh, one is that kids have to know more today than they used to. And so the teaching is more difficult because the subject matter is more difficult. The importance of it is more critical. And we demand a lot of teachers as a society because, quite frankly, the second reason is that not enough parents do a good job parenting. So teaching kids is tough. Pete, thank you. Uh, I don't know how good you really are, but there are 400 teachers in Wells County, and you were chosen teacher of the year, so you've got to be good at pretty good, Pete. Congratulations to you. Yes. <laughs> National Oil, Trout, I'm just so impressed. Uh, nice statement in behalf of the company from you and Ed. They are a huge success story here in Wells County. I didn't realize they were quite that big. Um, I thought they should have been by the price of gasoline, but I didn't know you'd quite made that. But great job. So proud of you. And the, the, the principles and the values that you express are so true in terms of what makes a successful person and a successful company. So thanks to you. I actually remember when the place looked like an airplane. I don't know how many of you can say that, but it did. Did it ever have a prop on it? It really had a prop. No kidding. Isn't that a story? Well, congratulations to Nation Oil. I want to talk just a little bit, I know it's time to go home, but I do want to talk a little bit about what a great place Wells County is. And I, I was going to start by saying, I heard a little thought the other day that from pe for people in our community, we all start on third base. Now, I don't know how many of you are baseball fans, how many of you know what that concept means, but if you're a resident of Wells County, if you were born here, if you lived here, if you matured here, if you were enriched here by our society, then truly you started on third base. Now what does that mean? Well, what that means is that for every batter that goes to bat, only about one in eight or ten makes it to third base. So if you're a Wells County resident, if you're a part of this community, if you have been enriched by the values of this community, the faith of this community, then truly life's just a bit easier. And you might say, oh, that's baloney. We all say we're from God's country, God's place. They say that whether you're from California or New York, wherever you are in the world. I would tell you I don't believe that. I think this is a special place. This is a unique place. We are uniquely blessed to have the opportunity. And so whether you're a baseball fan and you think that you're starting from third base, having an advantage maybe on some others, maybe you're a golfer. Don't golfers who get shoot from the white tees, isn't that a little bit easier? Maybe you're a, maybe you're a soccer fan, and our grandkids are. I guess they call it a penalty kick you get. It's kind of like a free score if you do good. And if you're a football fan, which you have to be coming up this next weekend, it's called taking the ball over in the red zone. I think we people in Wells County truly have been blessed with a community that in so many ways nurtures us in unique fashions that make, us, make it possible for us to succeed as a community and as a people. Is it God's country? Well, you know, I would say that aren't Americans better off than 95% of the other 95% of the world who start not on third base, but maybe not even getting to bat. We've got to be better off than that 95%. More than that, and here in Wells County, we've got to be better off than 80% of the rest of the people in this country. It is so much easier to succeed because of what we have in our community. Uh, Hillary Clinton, who's not been on my list of favorite people sometimes being a Republican, although she's a talented lady and I don't mean anything wrong, but 20 years ago, she wrote a book called It Takes a Village to Raise a Child. And I don't really believe that children ought to be raised by the village. I think that ought to be the family's job. But I do believe that a village can build the character and the opportunity of the individual involved. And I do believe a community makes that character an opportunity. I think about my own life. 
like all of us, I started out with a family at one point in time, a great family in my case, hopefully most of yours were the same. Set a lot around the kitchen table, had dinner together. Uh, we actually started out with an outdoor John, if you can remember, and uh, until I was about five. And there actually was a Sears Roebuck, Roebuck catalog sitting beside, in case you ran out of toilet paper. We didn't use corn cobs. We had a Sears. We were a very modern family. We had a Sears and Roebuck catalog. But my family taught me a lot about values and right and wrong, and they gave me a good sense of moral compass. And I don't think everybody in the world gets that from their family. I don't think every community encourages that kind of atmosphere. I went ahead, and, and Rick John Lewis talked about Little League Baseball or baseball. I thought about baseball, and we learned to start to play Little League Baseball at you know, early age. And our coaches taught us to be sportsmen and sportsmanlike conduct. They also taught us to win. They taught us to do our best and to win that game. It was a good training period, a time when we, I was nine years old. Then about 10, I uh, went to the Methodist Church uh, in Uniondale. And uh, my family was a family of strong faith. And I remember there was a revival starting. And if you, for some of you old timers will remember that every church had a revival for a week every year. That's just what they did. And they'd bring a fire and brimstone preacher in. And he'd be telling you, know, if you're going to go to hell if you don't do something better or whatever he's telling you. And so about the first night, uh, he's calling for the people to come down, come down and be saved. And I'm 10 years old and I figure this sounds like a good gig and I will go down front. So <laughs> I went down front and... Uh, my dad was not very happy. He says, I want you to have faith, but I don't want you to wear it on your shirt sleeve. That was a good lesson. And so by the time I'm 10, I'm learning to play hard, to be fair, but try to win. Faith is important to you in every respect. And then I got my first job at about 12, and I'm driving a farm tractor. Of course, it wasn't air conditioned. It didn't even have a cab in those days, as you all know. And uh, I had two jobs, driving the tractor and shoveling manure. And uh, you learn a lot about the things in life. Those opportunities don't exist everywhere in the world, not everywhere in the country, not even everywhere in Indiana. I'm absolutely certain that I've been born in the streets of New York, for instance. I wouldn't have played that Little League Baseball. I might not have had that family that was quite as involved in my life. I certainly would have been learning to work hard and be fair and honest in that sense of the word. And then went to school. I, I thought about it a little bit. I actually went to a one-room school times 12. It was a little box of a building, got a great education. Uh, Twelve grades in this school, each grade had its own room. It was almost like a one-room one school times twelve. But we had a heck of a good cadre of teachers who taught us the right things in life, the values that we needed to have, honesty. And so now, let's say I'm out of high school, and I've learned to work, to play hard, to be fair, try to win, be moral, to have faith, the kind of values that, once again, I swear are not everywhere in the world. And so I get to start my life out on third base. My life is a little easier than if I hadn't had all those people who were building the future for me. I left for the Army in college, uh, college in the Army. Came back home, started a small business, uh, learned to deal with bankers and merchants, trout, learned to be fair and honest with the people that I dealt with. Uh, they were good lessons, good hard won, hard thought lessons, uh, hard work and honesty, continued that practice. And then went into the political world, and although most people don't believe it, I, I tried to function with integrity, as I think most politicians do. Uh, but my, the public that I served from this community expected me to serve in that fashion. They didn't expect me to be other than upright, uprighteous and honest and truthful, to work hard. They set a standard of expectation, and I think I see Barbara Barbieri here back here, and I was not going to mention names, but you know, we had a newspaper in this community that expected you to produce and expected you to do it right and to do it well. And we were blessed with that in our little community of Wills County. Some people would say that we're molded by our DNA, and that's a part of us, I guess. We are, we, how, what we look like is determined by our DNA, but what we are is determined by environment. And we are blessed here tonight. Others have spoken about it. Rick spoke at length. Brent spoke at length about the chamber and how well we were doing as a community already. But it's all due to the values, the principles, the faith uh, that is a part of the environment in this community. It's a great place to live. Uh, I suppose our kids won't stay here, but it's been a wonderful place to live, a community full of faith and family and values and principles, the right things to live by, the right things to guide your life by. 
And so thank you for this award. I stand here tonight on third base saying God bless.